So I have really, really fine hair, but I also have really, really thick hair. <laughs> How is that possible? Let's get into it. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel where we talk all about the science of style, grooming and confidence so you can become the most attractive version of yourself you can be. If you want that, then please hit like and subscribe and join the family. And if you are on your hair growth journey right now and you feel like you're struggling, like you wanna quit and give up, please come join the Man and Maine's Facebook group instead. The guys in there are so positive and educated and they really just like make my life a whole lot easier. If I'm not answering a question, the gentlemen of Man and Maine's will have an answer for you. And calling them awesome is quite frankly an understatement. They're a phenomenal group of guys. So click the link in the description and come join the family. Okay, so moving on to the topic of this video. One of the most common misconceptions I see with guys when they're talking about their hair is using the term fine hair and thin hair interchangeably. So sometimes men will think that they're balding when in reality they just have thin hair type. Other times they'll say that they have thin hair when they actually have a full head of fine hair. Why is this even important? Like, why am I even talking about this? Why is it important to understand? And does this really matter? Because I mean, after all, it's just hair, right? You know, you clean it and you style it and you call it a day. So that might be the case if you have really short hair, but as guys grow their hair out, using the right products for your hair type becomes increasingly important. If you do use the wrong products for your specific hair type, then you will, at best, it'll just be harder for you to style your hair how you want it to look, or at worst, you could potentially damage your hair. So knowing this stuff is actually very important for healthy hair and just aesthetic styling. So the easiest way to explain this difference is to make a distinction between hair texture and hair density. You can see this visually with my hair type PDF, which you can download for free in the description. Uh, just scroll to the texture and density portions of the PDF. But I'm just gonna start this video with hair texture. So this is the size of one individual strand of your hair. And that's broken up into three different potential sizes you could have. You could have fine, you could have medium, and you could have coarse. So the way you test this is by taking one individual strand. So if I were to take one strand here, see how fine my hair is, it takes me a long time to get one strand. So here's one strand and you roll it between your fingers. And if you can't feel it, or if you can barely feel it, then you have fine hair. If you can feel it pretty easily, kind of like a cotton thread, then you probably have medium textured hair. And if you can obviously feel it, or it feels like a thin wire, then you have coarse hair. So the main difference between each of these three textures will be the amount of protein that each one holds. For example, a hair follicle is made up of a bunch of different things, but for simplicity's sake, there are three main layers that we look at to define hair, and those three layers are the medulla, which is the inner layer, the cortex, which is the middle layer that contains the protein and holds the melanin, which gives off the color of your hair. And then there's the outer overlapping scales, kind of like fish scales that protect your hair. And this is the cuticle layer. So if you have fine hair, you might only have two layers, a cortex and a cuticle. The medulla might be extremely small or non-existent. That's how thin your hair could be the individual strands. And if you have coarse hair, then you'll have somewhat of a thicker medulla and a thicker cortex, and then medium will be somewhere in between. When it comes to hair density, this is the amount of hair per square inch on your head. So in other words, the proximity the hair follicles are to each other. And the way you test this is to sort of part your hair where it naturally parts, which for me is kind of like right here. You take the hair and you kind of pull it. And you want to look at how much of your scalp is visible. So if you have really thick hair, then your scalp's not gonna be visible at all. And if you can clearly see your scalp, then you're gonna have thin hair density. And if it's somewhere in the middle, then you probably have medium density. So the way that you care for your hair is going to change quite a bit based on these characteristics. For example, if you have fine hair like me, your hair holds a bit less protein in the cortex. So using a shampoo and conditioner with protein in it will really help to keep your hair nourished and shiny. Coarse hair has a bit more protein, so if you're using a protein-based shampoo and conditioner every single time, it could cause a protein overload, which could make your hair feel a little too stiff or too brittle. It's good to have two options if you have coarse hair, like a non-protein-based and a protein-based shampoo and conditioner, so you can alternate 
between washes. When it comes to styling your hair, thick, coarse hair might have a ton of volume, just like naturally. You might see this with guys with really curly hair who have really thick, coarse hair because it's just so thick in density and in texture. So you're able to hold on to a lot heavier products. You're gonna get a lot more volume when you style your hair. If you have thick and fine hair, like that's what I have, then heavier products could weigh your hair down because even though it's thick in density, it's still really light and fine in texture. So if you're trying to get volume, then you're gonna to need to use lighter weight products like texturizing sprays, like powders, or using things that are water-based styling products rather than oiling-based, they're just lighter on your hair. And if you have fine and thin hair, then getting volume might be a little tougher. You're gonna to need to use ultra lightweight products like thickening mousses to help add a little bit more volume and puffiness to your hair. Okay, so having said all this, there are still a ton of other elements that can affect your hair care routine outside of just your texture and your density. So you're still gonna need to look at your hair porosity, your curl pattern, your scalp moisture levels. And if that sounds like a lot to you, like there's so much that you need to learn, that is why I created this video right here, the ultimate guide to men's hair types, where I go over every single characteristic that can possibly make up your hair profile. Click the link in the description to go watch it. And you can also download the free hair type PDF which is basically a condensed and summarized version of that video. It also gives you some fill in the blank spots for you to type in your own hair type, along with product recommendations for each one as well. And that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.